So we have this robot program now so we can press buttons on the smart dashboard and get it to do everything that it needs to do for the competition. Uh, what's missing is connecting this stuff to the operator interface and setting one of these commands to be the one that runs during our autonomous period. So first let's set the command to run during the autonomous period. And the way to do that is you can select the top of the tree where it says GearsBot and then choose an autonomous command. In our case, the autonomous command will be deliver cylinder. That's the, remember, that's the command group that does everything. The next thing we want to do is we have a joystick defined as part of the operator interface, but we, not, we want to now define some joystick buttons and, and then connect those to some of the other commands. So we're taking uh, joystick button one and we're making it do prepare to pick up when the button is pressed. So you can choose when to run the command. So we can say when it's pressed and it will run it at that time. Or you can say while held, and it will run the command over and over again while the button is held. Or you can say when released, and we'll run the command when the button is released. Um, so now we're doing the next one um, on button two, which is going to be pick up. And then we'll do the next one at another joystick button um, on button three. Okay, and we'll make that one place, and that will be when pressed. And then the fourth one will be the whole thing. And that will be when the button is pressed, um, we want to do deliver cylinder. So that should do it. That's button four. Okay, so now we have everything we need. Now, uh, before we show you this, I think we want to try and do something even more complicated. Okay, to show you um, a common case that comes up. Suppose you're at the competition and you decide you need a few other autonomous modes and other, a few other autonomous things that you can do. Because maybe the, uh, your alliance partners don't want you to start shooting until they're finished shooting, or you want to shoot first, then they want to shoot after, and that kind of thing. So you may want to have a bunch of choices of autonomous things, or maybe you want to do something defensive as an autonomous command. So you'd like to be able to choose, um, when you start up the robot, which thing is the autonomous command without having to recompile the code or do all kinds of crazy things with switches and buttons and stuff. And since we have the smart dashboard, um, we can do this pretty easily. So the way to do that is we're going to use something called the sendable chooser. So if we generate Java code for everything that we've got here, and then go to um, the go to, to NetBeans, we can add this stuff in. So in the robot, um, you'll notice that there's this robot init method. And down at the oh, one thing we haven't talked about yet is that you'll notice that the code that the robot builder generated, like where it made the new drivetrain, new elevator, new wrist, new claw, those go in between a couple of uh, comment blocks that say begin a generated code, auto-generated code, and end auto-generated code. Things which are placed in between those blocks are overwritten every time you say uh, export or you press the Java button on the robot builder. Anything not inside of those blocks are things which you can edit and they will not be overwritten. So what we want to do here is outside of some of those comment blocks, what we want to be able to do is, um, um, is be able to use the sendable chooser to uh, choose which of our autonomous commands to run. So we first want to set up the sendable chooser. So let's do that. So we'll create a sendable chooser object and we'll call it auton auton autonomous oh. autonomous modes. Oh. Oh. Okay, we'll call it autonomous modes, and that will be where we pick it. Okay, and then um, what we want to be able to do is um, instead of using the... Uh, uh, so notice what we're going to do now is we want to change the autonomous command. Now, if we just changed it inside of there, it would get overwritten. We want to change the autonomous command to be the result of the sendable chooser. So uh, we'll remove those, all those comment blocks and that uh, new deliver cylinder, and we'll put it... Uh, we'll put some code in here to choose our autonomous command. So we'll say autonomous So we're saying that we're creating a new sendable chooser here. We're going to set the uh, um, and this is in the robot init method, so this is when the robot first gets turned on. We're going to add some choices like deliver cylinder, and we'll add these commands. So for deliver cylinder, we'll add a new deliver cylinder command. Um, and then another uh, one of our choices might be, um, what do you want to do for another so, one? So, okay, so we're going to add a, uh, another one, and we're going to do a 
we're going to do an awesome autonomous. And that will just be the, um, so that'll just be the uh, autonomous command that we never bothered to fill in. So it does nothing, but, you know, it's another option. Okay. And, uh, and now what we have to do is, uh, when autonomous starts up, we have to shoot, we have to, uh, what this is going to end up, what this will do is that it will, it will uh, put on the smart dashboard those choices, and you'll be able to choose which autonomous command you want. Um, so we can take, we put these, we put this to the, the autonomous modes um, object to the smart dashboard. Okay, so that will get it written to the smart dashboard. And then when autonomous is initialized, we're going to set the autonomous command to be, uh, a com we're, going to, we're going to typecast this to a command, and it's going to be autonomous modes dot uh, get selected. Now, actually, before we go away, notice that um, when we created the autonomous modes, one of them says add default, one of them says add object. The one that says add default will be the default command that will be checked if you don't do anything else. It will be selected. And uh, then you can have a list of other potential autonomous commands. So you just list other commands there, and those will be other choices. All right. All right, so let's try running this thing and then see if it works. Oh, we have a error. Oh. Oh, I didn't auto import the joystick buttons. Okay. So we just have to import the joystick buttons, and now it should be good. So now we can just open up the smart dashboard. And um, yeah, if we move the driver station up here, um, you can see right now we're in teleop mode. Um, I think I think uh, if we move, maybe move the driver station a little bit out of the way, like up towards the top, because these uh, our, our chooser will show up near the bottom um, once the, once the robot finishes rebooting. So we're still waiting for the robot to reboot. It's loading the code. It's rebooting the robot. And uh, we're almost there. Okay, and now, notice how we have these two radio buttons, deliver cylinder and awesome autonomous. If we choose awesome autonomous, it's going to do this empty autonomous command that was just put there by default by the robot builder. If we choose deliver cylinder, that's what it's going to do when the autonomous command starts. Okay, so we're just going to, we're going to choose to do the uh, deliver, deliver cylinder. cylinder. Is, that's the, is the camera going? Yeah, the camera's going. Okay. So now we're going to put it in practice mode. And what practice mode does is it simulates the field. So first it runs the autonomous mode. And then after it runs the autonomous mode, it'll run teleop and let you have operating control for two minutes. And then once the two minutes is up, it'll, it'll stop everything. So you can simulate a real match. OK. So is it ready to go? It's ready to go. OK, let's enable it. Uh, it's counting down. There it goes. Five seconds. The autonomous is running. Okay, so it's grabbed our cylindrical object. It's raising it, driving forward to the platform. Now it's going to lower it. This is our autonomous program. Now we we cheated a little bit and we tweaked this because our, our autonomous program took a little bit longer than the default 15 seconds. So that's why you'll notice that the elapsed time is at 27, 28, 29. We made it 30 seconds, so now we're in teleop, yeah. and now we should be able to drive the robot around. But yeah. not only that, we have buttons wired to do the little pieces that we had before. So we can just press any button, and it will do some portion. Yeah. And you'll notice, as I can press one, so I can start to go down, and I can change my mind and go up, and it will interrupt it. So that's pretty good. We now have buttons to do each of the pieces of the, each of the commands that we wrote, and we have a button that actually will do the entire autonomous trick. So that's actually that's actually a really useful feature. Suppose the robot drives up and it's lined up with a cylindrical object and it wants to score it. Instead of doing that by hand, by doing each of the smaller commands, we have button four wired up to do the whole thing. You can just press button four, it would do the autonomous program. So it's exactly the same code uh, that gets reused either in teleop or autonomous. Uh, it, you know, it can be wired to buttons or wired to an autonomous mode. And we had the autonomous program. So all that stuff is done, and it probably took us about an hour and a half to write. Um, so 
you guys, no excuse. You have to have good robots, good autonomous programs. You can see it's like really easy to do, really easy to test. Uh, so good luck this season. And, uh, and, and if you have any problems, just post questions to the forums and we'll help you out.